Hello and welcome back to Woodcrafter's Corner. In today's video we are continuing our chess whittling series. We started with the pawn, moved on to the rook, last was the knight, and now we have the bishop. So this is what we'll be carving today. And all you need for this, if you watch the uh, prequel of the series, uh, hopefully you've measured this out, but it is a two inch long uh, piece of basswood, one inch on all sides, and with that we're going to carve it down to what you see here. So let's just get right to it. Now as with the previous steps, we will be drawing a circle on the bottom of our blank and that is basically just the diameter of the one inch. So basically so the circle touches on all sides. It doesn't need to be perfect by any means. So I just start with a very rough circle here just to give us an idea of how much of the corners we'll be taking off because that's exactly what we'll be doing. So we're just, just making that just real basic. So that is fine for now. Now that is about the only markings we'll be doing because if you look at it from the side, we'll be taking off so much from the uh, sides here that if we draw anything now, it won't do us any good. What we will do though is begin by putting on our glove. That's the safety step. If you have one, make sure you're being safe. And basically we're just going to take these off, let's make that a little better, and uh, the corners that is, all at once, just like we, we've pretty much done this for every one so far I believe, if not for sure every single one. Um, and so that's all we're going to continue to do here, just pushing through. Switching to a roughing blade. This one's giving me a little trouble. Maybe there's a knot there. I don't know. Whatever. And so this gives us an idea of how wide it's going to be, of course, on the base. But that's about it because we'll be taking off so much. Of course, if you'd like to and if it's helpful for you, you can find a pattern for this on my website, which I'll link, leave a link to in the description. And while you probably won't be drawing that on the wood directly, it'll at least give you a good frame of reference in uh, life size, so you can print that off and have it handy from multiple angles. All right, that's pretty much good for now. We're just getting the basics of it. And from here, you pretty much just want to visualize exactly what you want this to look like. So here's how I have done this in the past and what I find most useful. Get your pencil, hold these up next to each other. If you've had one made already, this is really easy. If not, this is where the uh, pattern could come in handy for you. But essentially, you just want to visualize how tall you want the head to be, which is kind of the important part. You can make it a little taller, a little shorter, whatever you want. Uh, and then, as you can see, the top of mine is crooked, but that's totally fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is make some lines where you see each one of these ridges here and use that to make some additional lines. Now a lot of these will end up getting worked out, so I think what I'll do is just start with this bottom one for now. So we'll work on the base first. So just wherever you want the base to be, make a little line and maybe just a little taller actually. Looks good. From there, since everything above this is narrower, we can really just start with this and it'll be a lot easier. So take your knife, press in on the mark you just made, and just as we've done with the previous ones, we're just going to run around the entire uh, diameter here and come around and try to meet the other side. So we'll do that real fast. Just pressing in pretty lightly because I'll probably end up having to adjust this, although this worked out pretty well. It doesn't always go so smooth, but I just like to have an idea before I start making bigger cuts. And so there you have it, just went around there. Now uh, now that I know exactly where it is going to be, I will press in a little bit deeper. And by a little bit, I mean quite a lot, because the harder you push now, the fewer times you'll have to run around it again. Good. 
Now what I'm going to do is make a few marks going both directions, a few cuts, and for the base I'm going to start right up near the bottom but not all the way at the bottom, just towards the top, towards the cut, the cut we just made. So that's it. The bottom here, the base, the width of it is not going to change. Uh, we may clean it up a little bit but overall that's going to stay. So we can begin to make the cuts that will stay there. ends up being this kind of slanted base area, so that's why we're doing it right now. And if you're not 100% sure what it's going to look like or you're still kind of making those decisions, just make these marks a little bit closer to the line and that'll leave you some room for error or some room to play, whatever. Then do it again. Just run around and do it again. And then I switch to my medium blade here from Flex Cut in case you were wondering what I'm using. If you have one yourself, I highly recommend them. They're great. And then just spin it around, see if it's level or even with what you want. Uh, but it doesn't have, again, doesn't have to be perfect because we'll come back in and clean this up later. But just to give you an idea, that's that's what I'm looking at here. Now, since again, since all this upper portion is more narrow, then we're going to need to take off a big chunk of what you see here. So all I'm going to do is go around the outside here and begin to do just that, just kind of taking it down. Now you do have to be careful because it's not exactly easy uh, to, to take it all off in a uniform way, meaning it's really easy to take off a bunch right here and then on the other side maybe not as much and vice versa. So to keep it level, even, consistent, whatever, throughout the cylinder shape here, occasionally you can just step back, uh, spin it around, see how it's looking in relation to the base here which will not change and then look at the top, different stuff. Just keep an eye on it. All right, so that just about covers it there. And so that's all we'll take off for now because we want to line up this these second ones here and make sure we do those okay. So uh, I have to leave a little bit of extra up here to account for this. So anyway, how do we do that? Well, it's simple and thanks for asking. Just make another line and obviously I have this for reference so I want to make it the same, but it's very simple. Just make another line. Um, basically up here, not too high, maybe something like that. I'm just eyeballing it here. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. Again, pressing lightly, trying to keep it lined up with the bottom lip here.
Now this one we're gonna do a little bit differently. We are going to have our knife here in the midpoint and do similar cuts like that, but always starting from the midpoint of that ridge. And keep the angle shallow because you can only go so deep with that first cut. And then just flip it around and we're gonna do the same thing down to here. And so that leaves us with a kind of shape like this. Let's make it a little more even. Now that it's a little easier to see how the base is coming into play. Uh, we do want to try to get this as even and kind of close to the final product as we can, just because everything we do from here on out will kind of build on this in terms of angles and directions and stuff like that. So take a couple minutes here if you need to make some adjust adjustments. Now let's move on to the next step, which is very similar because we just have another lip here. And so all we're gonna do is this time just come in from this one side. So flip it upside down and make very, very close to the edge here. Just make these cuts. We're not starting from way down here or down here. Very just, basically just taking off the corner So that's what we're left with there. And now what we wanna do is begin to take off even more coming up here now. Now that we've got our two kind of base areas, we can continue up. And here's where it might be good to make a couple marks towards the head here. So that might look something like, you're looking at it here, maybe we make this mark here. And these do not need to be perfect because a lot of this will end up carving away. But we, we'll start at least with this bottom one. Same thing as before. In fact, this time, I think what I'll do is something I haven't done before, which is just use the pencil all the way around. It can be nice because the knife creates at least some straight lines as you're going around, but I do want to make sure this is level, at least as much as possible. So you can spin that around and look. And I'd say that looks pretty good for our purposes. As always, it's totally fine if it's a little bit off.
All right, so you can see what I've got going on here. All I'm doing is taking off material in anticipation of this overall change that we're gonna be making. So this is really just a guide because we're gonna be taking off quite a bit, even from this top part here. But kind of like when you're drawing and it's easier to start with like a an oval shape before you draw your dog or something. I remember learning how to draw as a, as a kid from those books. They would always say, draw two circles now, add legs, and that was your cat or something. But anyway, um, it's kind of similar concept. Get the big shapes in here and it makes the future marks that you need to make a lot easier and a little more precise. So that is what I'm doing here. Not a huge deal if you don't keep it all even, but I just like to as I go. Makes it easier. We're still just taking off material a little at a time. And this is where you kind of get to decide how narrow you want it to be. You can see where I've got mine uh, on this one. And if you want it to look like that, we have to take off quite a bit still. Alright, so I'm just going to take out a little bit more from here, and I'm going to start doing this kind of sweeping kind of J-cut that I call it, uh, that we've seen on some of the other chess pieces that we've made so far. And that's because I do want to leave a little bit of this bottom part, which I can always come back and adjust, but I know I want the neck to be just a little bit skinnier, so this is a way to do that. Cut all these off and then we're going to start on the top part ne next. So to do that, basically just choose how big you want the top part to be, or what I've been calling the head. So for me, I want this little ornament, whatever you want to call it, to be a little bit small uh, in comparison. And so I'm going to leave this mark right here like that. And then the rest will just be an area for the head to be. Um, you can make a mark here to because you can see we have outward portion and an inward portion. I don't know how to describe it, but you could draw a line there to represent the two halves there, top and bottom basically. But we will be taking off some later, so I think I'll leave that. And let's just go ahead and make this mark instead for now. All right, and then we're just going to make a few cuts here to kind of show where that is. These cuts do need to be pretty deep for now because we're just going to keep whittling away at this. But doing it now like this, even though we're going to make both halves of this cut narrower, quite a bit narrower actually, this at least gives us some room for error. Let's go around again. All right, that's looking good. Now let's come down here and begin to take off this section here. It's gonna be a little tricky because it's so wide. So just start to take off little chunks like this for now. Nothing crazy, not too much. There 
and then you can start to angle it a bit if you want, like that. Still quite a bit left, so this is a little tricky. But again, all this is going to get whittled down even more as we go. I'm going to take off some down here now. Make this overall just a little bit smaller in diameter than this little ridge. Just a little bit, not much. But that gives it kind of a depth. So kind of like that. Now starting down relatively close, we're gonna do some more J cuts. And we're really fleshing it out now, so try to make these a little bit consistent if you can. You can see that kind of effect it's having. Okay, let's cut these off and see how we're doing. Looking pretty good. Some more to do over here. That's how you just you just eyeball it and just see how it's doing. I'm going to take out a little bit more here, angling towards the inner, inner part here. what I decided to do was come around this ridge here and uh, cut off some and so I'm gonna keep doing that here because I do want that to be just a little bit thinner and this is just personal preference so so if you like the way that yours looks then don't worry about this part but just making it a little bit um, smaller in diameter and then I'm going to make it a little bit thinner in the vertical plane these are words that I'm using, but I don't even know if they're appropriate. It's fine. And then to do that, all we do is like so. Now what that allows me to do is make this a little bit further down as well. I'm not going in at an angle here. I'm just going straight down.
and that'll have the effect of making this portion appear bigger, which is fine if you want that, but I am gonna make it narrower as well, which will make the entire body longer. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. Now, I'm going to repeat this earlier moves, but a little bit further down. And that'll end up making the body longer and just a tad bit narrower down here, which is what I wanted. And this is a great example of, you know, if, if the carving starts to go away, you, you want to change it a bit. You can do all of that on the fly whenever you want. Make those adjustments and that's part of the fun. All right, and at long last, I think I have that where I want it. So now we can move on to the top. Now, as you might've noticed, this is quite a bit bigger than what we've got here. So what we can do is kind of shape that in the way that we want. And we can begin to do that now. All we have to do is cut off some All right, so that's good. And now we obviously have this big upper section. So to get this the way I want it, pretty much make a mark here in the middle and then just work up. Again, just like we've been doing. Make this deeper if you need to. You start to have to be really careful pressing too hard because it's gonna be easy to take off this entire upper part. And don't go too deep here either because we still want to leave that room for error and by uh, too deep, I mean, on these cuts that I'm doing right now. So that's how we're getting to that point here. Still super rough, but that is okay. And then to shape up the top, we just basically need to go down, pick a point, again and this can be super rough as you can see I've left it kind of uneven on purpose and just come down from here as well taking out a relatively large chunk here but in a controlled way you can kind of see them rocking back and forth to avoid pushing so hard that I'll come right through and take out a chunk down here maybe don't want to do that Now let's shape this up just a little bit more, coming down here. Now let's make this line a little deeper up here. Again, 
pushing firmly, but not hard, and supporting with my finger in the back to avoid cutting too much off, or any off, really. We're just trying to make a line. There we go. And you can make this narrower by starting further down, like that. You can see that effect it just takes out a bunch, and that's what I want. All right, so you can see what we're getting at here. Very similar in shape and size, and that's what we wanted. All right, so here's where we are so far. Obviously, we have a lot to work with still up here at the head, which is great. So that is what we're gonna move on to next. As you can see, the upper part of the head is a little bit bigger than this is. So we wanna be careful not to take off too much here, but we're gonna take off some around the edges here. Just continue to eyeball it, making sure you're not taking off too much, leaving a little bit extra outside of this. All right, now as you can see, we've got kind of two halves of this one as well. One that slants down, one that slants upward. So let's go ahead and make that mark here. And instead of being right in the middle, though, we do want the bottom part to be a little bit smaller. So it's a little off center. So maybe come down here and make a mark. And then just work your way around. This part can definitely be uneven. That's kind of part of the overall style. There we go. And that's just a marking to let us know where to start because it's not a stop cut that we'll be using. We're just taking these slow, gradual slope cuts. I don't know what to call them. I should probably think of another name. I'm, there probably is a name for it, this type of cut. Angle cut or something, but I don't know what it is. If you do, let me know. Because slope just doesn't feel right. Careful how hard you push here, don't want to break anything off. Especially at this point when we're almost done. I've definitely done that before though. Very discouraging. Unless you can just glue it back on, which sometimes I do. And that works out fine. I did do a video on that if you're curious on how to fix it should something go wrong. But just some good old glue wall works really well. All right, you can see how that's shaping up. And now the beauty of this is that we can, instead of, be, instead of coming up from here, we can come up from here and narrow it even further. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but you're about, you're about to find out. Taking out big chunks because ultimately we want the top portion here to come to a point in the center. Keep in mind that the top of that point will have this little nub type of thing. So we don't want to come to a complete point just yet, but close.
Okay, now again, we do want to leave an area for that little nub. So don't come to a complete point in the center, or near the center. It's a little off-center, actually. You can see here, this is lining up perfectly. So we don't want to take off any more from this side. Or rather from, well, either way, I guess. But we have it right where we want it here. So leave some area here, and I'll leave a little extra for some, for some of that classic room for error. All right, so let's do a little planning here. So we know we have the top uh, well off center just the way we want it. And so we wanna make this off center as well. From the side view here, you can see that this angle is longer and shallower than this angle here. So that's what we want for this. And so to do that, all we have to do is come to the opposite here, take off a big chunk rocking motion and so you can see that that's kind of getting us where we want to be leaving a little tiny portion here that we'll use for that nub but we do have to be careful that looks pretty good and then over here, we'll come up similarly. And now we can start to leave this, make a little stop cut to it. Be very careful not to take it off. And then pretty much just go around and go up to that point in any way you want. Similarly, we have the center here, so I'm going to make a mark here and one here. Cut up to that carefully. One slip and it goes away. Worst case scenario, you could just glue it back on or carve one separately and glue it back on if you need to, but I would hope to avoid that if at all possible. Careful. This is the most delicate part. All right, looking good. It's right in the middle there, just where we wanted it. Okay, perfect.
Now, this is the fun part. We get to make this mark that we see here, this cutout. So that's pretty easy, but you do have to be extremely careful. Uh, pick a point close to the nub that we left here, and then just press down. But you do have to be extremely gentle here, otherwise we're gonna take out this whole section. And uh, <laughs> that's not what we want. So just rock it back and forth slowly. Just let it do its thing. And then come in at a shallow angle here, V-cut style, and take that out. Then make it wider, meet it, and just keep repeating that, but making small cuts instead of big ones. And this cut will pretty much go all the way to the edges here, as you can see. So it's pretty deep, but not too deep. We don't want to go past the edges at all because then it will break off. So it's a fine line to walk and a fine cut to make. So there you go. That's the cut we want right there. And now at this point, you can make this a little more narrow like this. I like to have this kind of asymmetrical look on the actual head portion. Or the hat, maybe that's what this is. It is a bishop after all. So kind of adjusting, making these angles a little sharper. But you can really do whatever you want. As I've said before, Clearly. And so there you have it, two bishops now done, uh, the one we just completed and the one I had before. Now imagine all the things you can do with these guys. I would say the main thing is probably play chess, but now you'll just need two more for the complete set. So watch out for the next episode in this chess whittling series where we'll move on to the next piece. And until then, if you found this video helpful or useful in any way, please leave me a like, it helps me out a ton. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.